afternoon. Uh, welcome to the 13th annual Metro CERT event. Um, we had planned this for April 30th, um, but like many plans in 2020, they were thwarted um, with the pandemic. And uh, we rescheduled to October 1st, hoping we could do a safe in-person event. Um, many of us, I think, thought that things would be back to normal, and that is not the case. Um, so here we are zooming together um, and rolling with uh, 2020. So, there we go. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to um, take a moment um, and um, talk about why we chose the topic that we chose for today. Um, we as a community grieve the loss of George Floyd and um, highlight the community that's coming together to try to create and rebuild something beautiful in its honor. Uh, the focus um, today will be on the role of clean energy in the Minneapolis rebuild. We have some amazing speakers today. Um, as some context for this um, focus, um, some of you may not realize that Great Plains um, where um, I work and others work is located just a block south of East Lake Street and a few blocks from the third precinct and um, a few more blocks from uh, the, the location of um, the tragic killing of George Floyd where that occurred. Um, while our building was not one of the many that was severely impacted during the civil uprising, this is our community. I, I can't seem to advance the slides. Oh, there we go. Oops. Chris, we're having a battle, I think, with the slides here. <laughs> okay, so um, just uh, here's a little bit about the agenda. Um, we'll um, do a brief overview of certs, and we'll do a little bit of polling. That's been a um, staple part of our event in the past. Um, we are um, have uh, Chanel Montana from Dunard um, Craft Spirits that's here with us. Matt Kuzinka with Lake Street Council. We have a panel with energy service providers, and then we have a couple of seed grantees. Um, so before we get started, um, we have had a change in the agenda um, for today. Um, we, um, you know, uh, may, you may have seen um, in Monday's uh, article in the city pages that the Gandhi Mahal restaurant is currently being investigated by the Minnesota Department of Human Rights. Um, Metro CERT, the Great Plains Institute, along with Gandhi Mahal's owner, um, Ruhal Islam, decided this is just not the right time to highlight their story. The focus of our event is on the role of clean energy in the rebuilding of small businesses and livelihoods in Minneapolis after the shockwaves over the killing of George Floyd. We want to keep the focus on the many ways in which businesses and many others in our community are working to advance this critical work. So uh, just a Reminders, just a couple of reminders um, for the event. Um, please use the question and answer function that is at the bottom of your screen to submit questions during the event. We have a couple of my CERT colleagues that will be sorting through those and proposing the questions as we go through. Uh, the chat function will be open to communicate to all folks and we will um, put, be putting some links and things um, throughout the event to um, help share some of the things that we're talking about and um, all attendees will be muted throughout the event um, just to keep us on track. We have a pretty packed agenda, so bear with us. So um, as I uh, planned for this event, um, I was um, sad that we couldn't meet in person. Um, it's been a highlight of my year, um, my years every year um, for 13. So I thought I would share just um, some, uh, I called it Coasts of Annual at Events Pass, some photos from, from some of our previous events um, so that folks can um, get a sense of some of the things that we did. So here's some uh, event, uh, some pictures from the event, including the first one, um, that's the picture of the flowers, and um, some from the Science Museum. For those that were there, we had this catch box microphone that we were tossing around the Science Museum. Um, we have some other photos, um, including one of my favorites, the one in the center with the ladies, um, the search label, the sustainability coordinators from some cities, 
uh, the Center for Energy and Environment um, team going all out in the photo booth, and then Amy Sparks, if some of you remember the incredible graphic um, note-taking she did at some of our events, that was incredible. And just a couple more shots. Um, we even had, as you can see in the bottom corner, uh, we had an appearance from Will Steger at one of our annual events. That was certainly a highlight for me. So just wanted to share some of those. Um, networking was a huge part of what we did um, at our annual events, and um, sad not to do that, and we usually had pretty good food. Um, so just wanted to share a few things as, I, um, as we move into our agenda today. So um, I'll just, I'm going to share a little bit about certs. Um, some folks know and some don't. We have a number of uh, new people in the, at the event, and so to give some context for who we are and what we do. Um, the first thing to talk about is that CERTS is a partnership with a shared mission. We're not an organization. CERTS is not an organization. Um, so Clean Energy Resource Teams, or CERTS, um, we, we really work to empower communities and their members to adopt energy conservation, efficiency, and renewable energy technologies and practices for their homes, their businesses, local institutions. We really act as a bridge to bring uh, people together with the tools and resources they need to make things happen at the community level. So how do we help? Um, we do it in a number of ways. We provide direct assistance guides, starting places, um, try to help people connect, um, and we share clean energy stories and job opportunities. And at the, end, um, at the of the slide, you'll see the partners. There are four main partners for the CERTS partnership, and um, Metro CERT is um, directed at, um, at by the Great Plains Institute. And so we'll, I'll share a couple slides and talk a little bit about the Green Institute, or sorry, the Green Institute. That's where I was the first at first, the Great Plains Institute. So um, we have this um, goal of focus on transforming the energy system um, with the focus, the focus um, that you see bulleted on the ways that we do that. We largely do this through bringing stakeholders together. And um, that is also um, a big part of how CERTS does its work is bringing people and voices together um, to bring to bear at the community level to help um, make projects happen. So GPI has um, four different program areas and the Metro CERT program sits in the communities team. And for the communities team, we have a strategic priority um, that is really about looking at equitable and inclusive action um, that is um, on clean energy, resilience, and climate mitigation, and really for that to be the norm for all Minnesota and Midwestern cities and communities. Metro CERT is focused in Minnesota, but some of my colleagues in the sustainable, um, uh, in the communities team um, focus in other areas um, outside of Minnesota. So the Metro CERT region um, covers the 11 county metro region. It is not the seven county, it is the 11 county region. And it's about half the state's population. So no small feat there. Um, we have a, a pretty wide population and um, keep ourselves pretty busy trying to work with communities across the region. And um, we are um, thrilled to be working with communities all over, whether it's Chicago, uh, the picture at the top with the middle school solar project that we funded as one of our first seed grants in 2009, to a really recent picture and down in the bottom right um, where we worked with the city of Shoreview to help install a, an electric vehicle charging station. So um, very happy to be working with communities all across the metro region. So a little more about CERT, um, just giving kind of some more background. CERTs, how do we work? Um, we are really agnostic um, about why people want to do clean energy. Because we're statewide, not, not every community comes to the table because they believe in climate change or want to reduce greenhouse gases or anything like that. They might have a different reason. They might want to save energy, save money. Um, it just it might be different, and we're really agnostic about that. Um, regardless of that, we want to help make clean energy projects happen, and we want all people to have a seat at the table and an opportunity to act. So um, we really are um, trying to get th that 
the learning that we help people do into action. So how do we work? Um, you saw a little snippet about the metro region. That is one of seven regions across the state um, where CERTS is. We have staff uh, in each of those regions um, supporting action that, that's happening there. Um, and it, the, the nature of having regions really allows us to tailor based on those regions' needs. Um, and their approach. Um, so, you know, we don't believe there's any, I don't believe there's any other clean energy entity in the state of Minnesota that has quite the coverage we do with staffing in all quarters of the state. Um, and, you know, the members of CERT um, have, we have people in all parts of those regions and a big, and another really important part is not just staff in each region, but each region is governed by a steering committee. Um, of people that could be individuals, small business owners, farmers, utility representatives, environmental groups, elected officials, government staff, um, all that share the same common goals that they want strong communities, local jobs, and secure, clean, reliable energy. So speaking of steering committees, um, every fall we um, have uh, an election for new steering committee members, they're two-year terms, and um, we are doing that again. So if anybody that's on the, the meeting would like to join the steering committee in the metro region, please please be sure to um, let me know. Send me an email by November 1st, just your name, your affiliation, why you are interested in being on the steering committee to help kind of guide the program work and the unique needs of the metro region. Um, here we've got, I, some of you, if you know me, and you probably see throughout the presentation, a little selfie, that's kind of my MO with a group of people. And um, uh, we've highlighted here a, a couple of our new members in 2020. We also have a blog on our, um, on our, uh, on the search website about the new steering committee members. So join us. Um, and we really like to encourage people from historically marginalized communities to join us as well um, as we um, work to, um, again, uh, have a seat at the table for everyone. Uh, so just to quickly, you know, I think it's important um, to let folks know, besides bringing people together and talking about clean energy and, and connecting to resources, we are having an impact. And we have um, some staff members that work to uh, tabulate um, the impact that we have. Um, you know, one really great example is the uh, C grants, and we're going to hear a little bit more later about the C grants and the money that we've done, um, the money that we've doled out in the last um, 14 years, um, you know, what, in, including impacting people through events and things since 2009, and actually saving energy and putting clean energy on the grid. So um, that's a, if, you, if you're wondering why you want to join the team, um, that is a good way, a good reason because we are having an impact. So what are we about? Uh, I, you know, I think a lot of people um, perhaps are aware that we are about energy efficiency. Some people think it's boring, um, but you know, if solar or electric vehicles is the new hot topic, um, we, you know, really try to bring people in on talking about energy efficiency and other ways to reduce their energy use before we talk about solar, because we think that that's a really important thing. So, um, you know, we are working with communities um, and in their government, you know, in the local government, in their buildings, in homes, in community centers, wherever it might be, to help reduce energy use across the state. We're also about renewable energy. Um, lots of renewable energy options across the state. Um, we probably focus a little bit more on solar in um, the metro region. We don't have big biomass plants or anything like that. So I, we, we tend to see renewable or the renewable energy flavor in the metro region is more solar than other things. So then um, also electric vehicles. Um, that has been a, a growing topic with the metro region and certs overall. So um, we have been really working with uh, cities and utilities, fleet managers, and others to explore options for accelerating the adoption of clean energy and, and 
electric vehicles across the state. Um, you know, just reminding people that, you know, electric vehicles come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. We have the infrastructure in place now for most people to get, a, get across, you know, get do their daily driving and more is coming. So, you know, it's not a trend, it's here to stay and we'll talk a little bit more because in case you didn't know, fun fact, little foreshadow, it is not National Drive Electric Week. And then finally, we are about people. Um, we bring people together. People is at the center of the work that we do. Um, we work in community and um, we really appreciate um, what folks bring to the table and we learn a lot from the communities that we work in and um, it is a huge part of what we are. And so, there. Um, so we do have some focused audiences um, and they're all listed here. Um, you know, we do work across the state. So again, in different areas, there's different things that we um, kind of focus in on. Um, but, you know, here's just an example of the audiences that we're focused on. So I'm just going to highlight a couple of um, programs and resources. Um, so a vision for solar schools in Minnesota. Um, you know, it would be really great if all of the schools in Minnesota had some solar energy that was powering them. Um, you know, most do not, um, but there are, you know, some that do, and there's never been a better time with the reductions in cost of solar to jump in, um, and we really want to help make that happen. So we've been putting a focus on that um, very recently. After a history of working with cities, uh, especially uh, on solar, in addition to other audiences. So here's just a quick snapshot of uh, solar uh, schools, schools with solar, and there's a combination of on site, so having solar on at the facility, whether it's on the roof or ground mounted, and CSG, and if you don't know what that word is, it's Community Solar Gardens on that, um, subscribe to a Community Solar Garden to provide solar energy. So 40 districts um, with 159 sites. So we're really trying to help support those schools that want to advance. So if you know of a school or you're at a school and you want to um, help that happen, let us know. So, oops, can you go back one? Thank you. Reducing energy burden for families. Um, this is actually a newer um, effort that we've launched recently, um, really talking about how much does, a, what percentage of, of a person, a, a family's income do they spend on their energy bills? And so you're seeing here on the slide that nationally it's uh, about three and a half percent, but we, there are some Minnesotans that spend much, much more than that. Um, and we really want to tackle that. We think that that's a real issue and a real problem. So um, as part of that, um, we have launched the under 5% campaign where we're working to help reduce the costs um, for um, families. And this graphic, um, we have had a lot of people comment on this graphic. It really helps kind of illustrate the, the need and the problem about um, the the dots in red are the households that were eligible for assistance in 2017. The yellow ones were the ones that did receive some energy assistance. Um, and the green, the two green dots um, proportionally show um, how many households were actually received weatherization assistance to get their homes weatherized to reduce that, that burden going forward. So uh, at that rate, it's going to take 291 years to weatherize all the eligible homes. And it's we can do much better, and so we're really focused. We're really focused in on that right now. Um, we also have, in case you don't know, a clean energy job board, and um, where we're helping highlight the the jobs. It's become a, a bigger and bigger part of careers um, and career paths going um, in the recent past. So we um, have put together a clean energy job board, and we have a careers page if you're interested and looking for a job or if you want to post something, um, please get a hold of us and, um, and let us know. And then uh, I, I, sh I foreshadowed a little bit about electric vehicle work. We are doing uh, a number of things in the electric vehicle space. Two things in particular I want to point out is um, we're really 
spending a lot of time working with peer cohorts where we bring communities together of peers. Um, two main audiences, the audiences we've been working with recently are cities, and we just launched Cities Charging Ahead 2.0, the second effort in September. Um, and this picture is from the first effort. Um, and then powering ahead with a vehicle electrification or PAVE, and that is a peer cohort that is um, working with specifically with municipal utilities and helping them um, really, um, again, accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles across the state of Minnesota. And as I said, foreshadowed, um, it is National Drive Electric Week. And as part of that, normally we do a bunch of ride and drive events because we know that the best way to get people to consider an electric vehicle is what I would call getting their butts in seats. Um, and we can't do that this year. So instead, we decided to launch a social media campaign to really show people um, how many vehicles there are across the state of Minnesota, the different kinds of drivers, and the different vehicles, because there's still some barriers about what people perceive as who are electric vehicle drivers and what those cars are, little tiny clown cars, et cetera, and that is not the case. We have many, many models that are even available here in the, metro, in the Midwest. Um, so please join us um, if you're an electric vehicle owner and uh, take a picture of yourself. We've got a frame if you want to use that on Facebook that you can look up. Um, and um, you can use the hashtag I drive electric and then please use the hashtag and say which county because we're we're um, coloring in an orange uh, map of Minnesota throughout the week it, um, the week goes through Sunday to um, show kind of people what types of vehicles are out there and the people who drive them. Mm -hmm.